ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. This is your boy, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with North Carolina's very own Crystal Bear Lawson. <laughs> How you doing today, Crystal? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks. Um, for those of you that may not know Crystal, as again, she's a North Carolina girl who started off MMA, and now she is a Muay Thai fighter with Glory Kickboxing. And, uh, you know, one of the questions that we wanted to ask is, how does a girl from the Madison Mayoden area um, end up becoming a Muay Thai kickboxer? <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I tried a couple sports in school and I sucked at those and uh, <laughs> probably around my mid-20s I started training um, Muay Thai under uh, Rick Davis out in Statesville and I trained there for a while and I had my first fight after about six months. I honestly just watched a documentary on it, fell in love with it um, and I've just been going ever since it's honestly the first thing I was ever uh, really good at athletically I didn't really even know I was an athlete or mm. had those abilities so awesome awesome I saw on your IG and I think you make a very valid point like nobody's really born to know how to throw a punch and like how how far into the training process was it to where you were like you know what I, I love this I'm, I'm gonna do this oh I knew immediately okay uh, I knew the first day walking into the gym, I knew before I walked into the gym that I wanted to compete. Um, that was my original reason of going in because I just, I was so in love with it already before I found it. And then, um, like I said, I went and I trained and I, I started to pick it up sort of naturally. Mm. And then I, I fought pretty quickly thereafter and just, uh, I was hooked. Awesome. Awesome. And um, so how many years now have you been doing it all together, whether if it's MMA, the kickboxing aspect of it, all that? Um, I guess around nine and a half, close to 10 years now. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, some of you may not know, Crystal is a mom as well. So how is uh, one of the questions that we got from, uh, from our Instagram fans is, you know, how has it been the process as far as kind of balancing being a mom as well as training to become a badass fighter? Um. I would say pretty easy. Like when my daughter was younger, it was a little bit harder when I was trying to do stuff like, let's say run and things like that. But she's 19 now. Yeah. Um, she's obviously self-sufficient. So uh, she takes care of herself. And uh, now she tells me what to do every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I have an 18 year old that likes to boss me around too. So <laughs> She's currently bummed out because she has to finish up school online, like pretty much the rest of the U S and this was her first year at UNCW. So I yeah. think, uh, you know, we're getting used to it. And, uh, I know that you moved to new England, um, last year. And another question we got is, um, uh, from one of your fans out there is, you know, how do you compare new, obviously it's night and day difference, but yeah. you know, what, what are your thoughts as far as new England compared to North Carolina living? Um, I don't, there isn't really a comparison to me. Um, uh, uh -huh. my heart is in the South. My heart is in North Carolina. I'm here right now with family. Um, actually I'm at my daughter's house now, but, um, yeah, it just, it doesn't compare to me. I hate the cold. I grew up here, so I, I <laughs> used to warm weather and, uh, I moved up there and it was definitely is a big shock for me and it's been super hard to get used to and I don't know if that's something that a person can ever get used to. I've I've had some really good training up there, uh, amazing coaches, the kickboxing scene, the Muay Thai scene is, is a lot bigger there mm -hmm. um, and since being there in that aspect, I've definitely grown as a, as a fighter and as a person I've had to overcome, you know, being in the cold because I hate the cold so much. But, right. Um, I, it made me appreciate home even more because I, I feel like there's so many things that we take for granted, like green grass and, you know, humidity, things like that. Like, I didn't realize how much I loved those things until I, I didn't have it. Sure, know? sure. Okay. No, understandable. And, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people, I'm actually down in South Carolina now where my daughter's mom and, and, and her live right outside of Myrtle beach because of all this going on. And, you know, obviously this has put a, the stop to fights and training for you. You know, how was it adjusting to all that? I mean, I don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm loving the family time. I'm sure as much as you have, but also being a bartender too. And, you know, my bar, my background's in bartending as well. 
I mean, just, you know, how have you been adjusting to kind of not just life without work, but, you know, kind of like the new norm as of right now? Um, so my schedule's changed a bit. It's obviously I'm, I'm not sparring, <laughs> um, right. but I still have a bag here. So I'm able to do bag work. It's kind of, um, Mark De La Grotti got posted the other day. It's kind of taking it back to more traditional Thai style. You know, I, mm -hmm. I'm still running. I still have my strength conditioning coaches here actually. So I still have a gym to do my conditioning. I can go outside and run. Um, my gym here, Gemmo has been doing live uh facebook live so i've been going on there and even just doing those workouts and it's a sense of community in that way so i've been doing a lot of stuff i'm also in yoga teacher training and oh, nice. i've yeah so i'm doing <laughs> between all of that stuff and then i'm doing yoga like twice a day now so basically it's a uh, kind of gel house workouts and uh a lot of yoga so yeah <laughs> well good for you that, that that's awesome um I, I know you said that it was a documentary that got into it. Um, do you have any fighters that, uh, that, you know, you kind of looked up to as far as just kind of coming up and training and maybe still look up to now? Um, I think some of the first girls that I ever seen um, competing in were like Felice Herrig, which I love her, uh, Miriam Nakamoto. Those were some of the first girls, Julie Kitchen. People like that are definitely the, the female fighters that I really have looked up to and kind of followed their careers, you know. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I got another question from a fan here. Um, as far as like cheat day meals, what are some of your like most epic cheat day, like with, like your go-to on when you can just eat whatever you want or drink whatever you want? Um, I'm... It's not that I'm ever on a super strict diet because I train so much. I don't mm -hmm. ever eat a lot of carbs. Okay. Um, but I love cookies. So <laughs> <laughs> um, usually at least once a week, I definitely eat cookies. Um, yeah. And if I, I'm not a huge drinker, if I drink, you know, it's tequila. But nice. besides that, I'm, you know, I'm pretty good on my diet. I feel like I don't, I don't. I just really don't eat that many carbs. <laughs> gotcha. So cookies and tequila, that's one hell of a combination. <laughs> <laughs> if yes. you ever get, if you ever get your own reality show, that could be a little name for it right there. <laughs> cookies, no, tequila, be, and Muay Thai. I'd be totally <laughs> fine with that. As long as I'd be good. <laughs> Um, so I, I know that you mentioned before, uh, that you kind of started a little bit late in the game, um, just as far as training and everything else, like what advice would you give to people, not just, you know, people that are, you know, and I hate the term late in the game. You just kind of figured out what you wanted to do a little bit later. Um, you know, it took me a long time to figure out that I truly enjoy the media side of it. And I love podcasts and YouTube videos, but what advice would you give to people? Not just with, um, uh, when it comes to like kickboxing, but just in general, you know, as far as kind of chasing their dreams and going after it. Cause of course I know you went through challenges and, you know, kind of cover that a little bit as far as some challenges that you overcame and, you know, some advice to some of our listeners and some of our YouTube uh, channel watchers out there. Yeah. I never feel that it's too late to start. I didn't find this until later. And I feel that I'm just now kind of coming to the point where I'm putting everything together, all the things I've learned. It's, it's not the mentality that used to be with the sport where, okay, when you're 25, you're done. Right. Like things have changed now and I'm being 36. I'm just now, and I'm still learning. I learn every day and there's some stuff that I, I mean, I've got so much to learn still, but it takes really long time for your, your brain to put together in the ring, what you actually want to do. Sure. What you need to do. So, um, it, it's really never too late. Some of the greatest guys, fighters, a couple of my coaches, I mean, they didn't start until they were like 35. Sure, they didn't have long careers, but I mean, sure. honestly, at this point, if you're treating your body good, age really is just a number. Like, I take really good care of myself, and I can honestly say that I'm in much better shape than a lot of people that are half of my age, and I don't right. even look at that at all. Damn, that's, that's awesome. That is really good to know. Um, so, you know, I know the story behind the bear nickname is you, you, one of your old trainers called you that. And this is another question from a fan. If you weren't going by bear, like what would be like, what would be the number two nickname that you would go as? <laughs> um, 
I mean, everybody calls me a little monster too. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that. No, and since I love cookies, maybe we could add Cookie Monster in. I don't know. <laughs> um, but pretty much, I only get called monster besides bear. So I guess it would have to be that. Okay. I don't know how pesky it is, but <laughs> <laughs> you can come out with a little Cookie Monster kind of like head thing. <laughs> yes. And then everyone will give me cookies after. So I mean, maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. Um, so as you know, we we, uh, we we talk and cover all things pop culture. This inc includes sports, uh, movies, TV shows, all that fun stuff. What are some of your uh, pop, like pop culture interests as far as music, TV shows, like some of the things that you're just really, really into? Um, I pretty much listen to all music. Um, right now I'm obsessed with Lil Wayne's new album um, <laughs> for, for working out. Um, besides that, I, I listen to a lot of kind of indie style music um tv wise pretty much anything new on netflix right now is pretty good i haven't watched the tiger King, <laughs> but i'm going to uh -huh. but yeah pretty much anything netflix i've i've probably binge watched it on a day off for sure um so for more for my cheat days that kind of goes back to that i kind of binge watch netflix and all right okay so it's more of an entertainment cheat day not a food cheat day Yes, we don't have time to usually sit down and just like watch shows. So right, that right. Is cheating, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've seen some of your training videos, and I tell you what, you are incredibly, incredibly fast. Um, and it looks like you strike hard. And and uh, you know, so a lot of people don't know. I, I reached out to Crystal because of uh, she had a post um, relating to you know we all know those those armchair quarterbacks. The haters out there, no matter what you do, like my, my daughter's in film school and kind of one of the first things I told her is, listen, whether if you're directing a movie, producing a movie, not everybody's going to like your movie, but you can't listen to the haters. You have to listen to the good. So kind of, you know, talk about a little bit just about the last fight, um, you know, and then just your, your feedback and what you can tell people too, because I think the fear is what keeps a lot of people from trying to, whether if it's achieve their dreams or just be themselves, whether if it's online or in real life. And just how that's really just inspired you to, you know, even go out and, you know, take names and kick even more ass. Yeah, um, I'll say that the last fight, obviously, fighting for glory is huge. Um, I never really intended to do kickboxing. I've done Muay Thai forever and um, because I love the sport, but I'm, I'm really good at kickboxing. And once I really started training and preparing for, um, for my glory fight, so it, was, it, it really made sense for me to do kickboxing. Um, my heart is still always with Muay Thai and I'm planning a trip to Thailand soon, but to answer your question, um, yeah, I just, I, it was such a big deal. It was, it was awesome to get out there and you know, you plan for things and you train for things, but you've, I've done Muay Thai for so many years. And also I hadn't fought in almost two years. My last fight was an MMA fight, right? Um, but I was well prepared for this fight. I, I, trained hard i sparred my ass off like i i was ready just as i am for any fight mm -hmm. um, and just went out there and i fought uh one of the girls that they're looking at to be number one right now um alex Pereira, sister elena and um she, this chick it, she's almost six foot and she hits harder than anybody i've ever been hit by in my life right um and, you know, I got knocked down several times in the fight, kept getting back up. Um, the ref called it, but, you know, it is what it is. Things happen. So the other part of your question is, yeah, on the Internet, you know, when it's being reposted, you have people saying, oh, she doesn't belong in the ring or mm -hmm. she should she should play chess or she's too pretty for that. You know, it's just so many it's just stupid comments. And I, I didn't realize, like, <sighs> I guess I understood what a big deal glory was, but I didn't really think about how much media was going to be involved in that, sure. that I was really going to notice those things or pay attention to them. Um, so I try not to, but I like the post from the other day was, it was a repost and then people are just making all these stupid comments on there. And I'm like, if you're not in there, you have no clue. Right. I, I was prepared. I was ready. Mm. I did everything I was supposed to do. And honestly, nine out of 10 times, if you asked any of my coaches, I would have beat her. Mm. And I still would to this day, not taking anything from her. She's an amazing fighter and she's a top prospect and she's great. Mm. But I also have the tools to do the same thing. I just right. didn't do it that night. I went right. out there. 
Um, I started slow and Hey, it's kickboxing. It's different. It's not Muay Thai. Right. You you, <laughs> that's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And I mean, I, I you know, I, know, I remember responding to you and I was like, keep going. And I mean, to me, there's always going to be trolls, you know, and it's just one of those things to where, like I said, I preach to my daughter, preach to everybody. Like if they're not in your tight knit circle and this isn't close family and close friends, like that's the only opinion that to me, not that I need validation for much, but you know, that's the only people I really listen to besides that. I mean, if it's some Joe Schmo that's out in Nebraska that, you know, weighs 500 pounds and will never step into a ring with someone like you, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's easy to, to say all these things, but they don't, they don't even know the first hand. No, so. it's like, you don't know. And so, yeah, as, as a response to that, it's like, just you, people are going to say stuff. People, uh, Tiffany, the night of my fight, won her belt back. And I, I look at her page and everyone's got comments under it, basically like that she didn't win the fight and things like that. And it's just like, people are always right. going to have something to say. You just, you can't, you can't attach to it. Right. And I've just, I try not to read it because I don't want to attach to those feelings. Right. Because I know they're not true, but it's, it's going to creep in a little bit, but you just can't sure. let it affect you. Well, it definitely should. And, and uh, you know, I know we don't know each other well, but, you know, I, I definitely want you to keep this up. I think you're an inspiration to, you know, everyone in North Carolina, all all the, the ladies and girls out there that are, you know, dreams and aspiration of being a, a Muay Thai or, or a kickboxer, any of that. So, I mean, keep it up. Um, one one question that a, that a fan asked, and this is kind of, I mean, pop culture-ish related. If you were to, like, <laughs> just, you know, in the ring, pick one person, whether fictional, this could be like a, a movie villain, a villain in real life. Like who would you just like to just kind of like pummel in the ring, you know, as many rounds as you want one time. Oh gosh. this is a <laughs> Oh man. Hmm. So it can be a fictional. Oh, gosh. This yeah. It can be, funny. it can be a real person. So it could be like Hitler or you could go fictional and go like, you know, like a movie villain, <laughs> however you want to answer it. Hmm, I'm trying to think of someone I dislike in movies. <laughs> life. Um, I don't want to name any names in real life because there's a few people that um, <laughs> that that, uh, that I have on my list, but I don't uh, like to call people out. Um, well, we'll just leave it at that. There's a couple of girls who have uh, had a few things to say on the internet, and um, I, they know who they are. So if they want to actually step up and step in the ring with me rather than sit online and talk shit, then that's, that's, that's great. We can definitely make that happen. Oh, I love it. I love it. A little spitfire. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, before we get off, uh, you know, now's your time to, as far as shout outs, like where can people, you know, find you on social media? And of course, you know, shout out any, any trainers, sponsors, anything like that. Uh, you know, let the world know like, uh, you know, what you're about and uh, where they could find you. Yeah, so my Instagram is Tybox Bear. Uh, my Facebook is Crystal Bear Lawson. I train in Massachusetts. I train at Joe Lozon's gym, Lozon's MMA. I train with Chip Maraza Pollard for my Muay Thai. Um, Jimmy McDonald here in North Carolina. I'm with Jimmo. With Jeff Jimmo is the coach there. My strength conditioning coach is Ryan Helm. Uh, my sponsor that has supported me so much has been Homegrown. Um, Iron Shin Promotions is Al Rodriguez, who's my manager, and he's been with me from step one from, you know, when I was first getting calls about lion fights. So, mm. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Crystal, again, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you check her out. Once this uh, pandemic gets over with, we're definitely looking forward to uh, seeing you fight again. So keep us posted. We'll blast it all over our website, social media. Uh, you definitely made a lot more uh, fans out there, whether here in North Carolina, worldwide, people that have maybe never heard of you before. But remember this person, remember her name, Crystal Bear Lawson, North Carolina's very own. Thank you so much. And we look forward to catching up with you soon. Thank you. Victory! And anger management? Fuck anger management.